Today, I will be introducing first Michael Johnson, and then uh, introducing the others that need to speak to the truth that needs to be known. And that truth is that kids in the Boy Scouts of America scouting USA are not safe. Boy Scouts of America is not safe for kids. It is safer, but it's not safe for kids. I stand here today to say something that this organization, the Scouts Executive Leadership, does not want me to say, and that is that statement. To you survivors, and I feel strongly about speaking directly to you, I've had the opportunity to meet numerous of you over the years while I was at Boy Scouts and since I've left. I've heard your experiences. I don't use the term story. Uh, especially you Eagle Scouts. Especially you Eagle Scouts who put up with continued sexual abuse. And I know exactly what sexual abuse looks like. Not just the term, the phrase, but the activity that you had to put up with to gain your eagle. And then the Scouts that left scouting because they didn't want to put up with their sexual abuse, continued sexual abuse. So this is for each and every single one of you because I never forgot you while I was there and I will never forget you and your experiences. We failed you, I failed you. Not only did you experience sexual abuse, but you were and continue to be marginalized within the Scouts organization. Your experiences and level of suffering is incomprehensible. And I know this, I hear you, I have always heard you, and your experiences have always been at the forefront of my efforts. So I stand here today, bolstered by your experiences to tell the truth. During my time at the Boy Scouts of America, I did everything within my power to make scouting safe for every scout. No matter the scout's gender or sexual identity. Each scout deserved and still deserves a scouting experience that is safe and safe from sexual abuse. It is not. I tried, but could not make the needed changes within the organization. I was met with opposition, pushback, and denial. I knew that the only thing I could do to honor your, you survivors' experiences and to force the needed change was to stand here and make public what I know. Scouting is a high-risk organization. I repeat, scouting and its programs are a high-risk organization. And although I was able to implement many new policies and procedures and training that I'm very proud of, to move the scouting program into a much safer place, the Boy Scouts continue to fail to meet an acceptable standard of care for a high-risk organization that they are. This is a basic concept that Scouts executive leadership continues to fail to understand. Oh, and they have been told. They've been told by me and they have been told by others. Simply put, I cannot live with myself if I do not speak out about the danger, the clear and present danger that scouting presents. And I don't see the path forward to making it uh, safer as things are going now. Again, I apologize for every survivor who has been villainized by the Scouts organization, both by being disrespected disbelieved regarding your experiences. You have earned the right to know the truth, and I'm willing to tell you the truth. It is time for real change in the Boy Scouts of America, or Scouts BSA. This call to action is not meant to end scouting. 
Anybody who knows me, you scouters that are out there, if you know me, you know that's not what this is about. We must instead create the independent accountability and oversight that is necessary for a safer scouting program right now. The organization as it now stands fails to meet this ideal. It fails our nation, it fails our families, it fails every scout in the program. I'm extraordinarily proud of Michael and what he's been able to do here today to give voice to every single survivor who felt like no one in the executive brand, executive leadership of the Boy Scouts listened or cared. And finally, on behalf of the Zero Abuse Project, it is our mission to stop the cycle of child sexual abuse. It is our mission to take immediate action to ensure that what happened to people like me doesn't happen to another child. And one of the major ways this happens is when brave whistleblowers like Michael stand up and do the right thing. Because when, he, when we were getting ready for this, he told me, oh, Joel, I swore to protect in my job. I swore to protect the Boy Scouts of America. And when he said that, he didn't mean the executive leadership. He meant every single boy, now girl, in Scouts BSA. I just want to emphasize a couple of things Mike said. Why is it that Boy Scouts might be a high-risk organization more than other institutions? First, we know from research that men are more likely to be pedophiles than women. Don't get me wrong, there are female sex offenders, perhaps more than we thought of in the past. But we know that those who would meet the diagnostic criteria for pedophilia are much more likely to be men than women. For example, the Diagnostic Statistical Manual of the American Psychiatric Association says pedophiles, pedophiles uh, among the male population may be as high as 5%, but it's minuscule among women. Well, if you're going to start an organization of men overseeing boys, you know going into it you're going to have a higher percentage of pedophiles than you would otherwise. If you look beyond pedophilia, which is a diagnosable condition of intense sexual urges for children, and look beyond it to uh, the population, do you have any sexual interest in children? There too, it comes up that more men are sexually interested, interested in children than women. One study uh, of the general population, 9.8% of the men said they had some sexual interest in children, but it was only 4.2% of women. That's a dynamic we know from research that needs to be taken into account. Second, we know from research and experience that sexual predators, those who accumulate large amounts of victims, are much more likely to be men than women. There's also some evidence that predators who primarily target boys uh, will accumulate larger numbers than those who target girls. One study, the predators in that study, who focused exclusively on girls, averaged about 19 before they were caught. Those who targeted boys were averaging over 150 which leads to the third risk factor. There are unique vulnerabilities for boys. We know from research that although both boys and girls delay their disclosure for a long period of time, uh, one study found that 58% of children delay disclosing until they are adults. We also know from the research that generally speaking, boys delay longer than girls, with one study finding the average delay was 20 years. Now let me make it this clear. That's not 20 years till you call the police. That's 20 years until you tell another living human being. And there are unique factors with boys that predators take advantage of. In our society, if you're a boy, you're supposed to be tough, you're supposed to be strong, and that is a value that perhaps unwittingly is part of the scouting movement, and a predator can take advantage of that. If you talk about it, people will think of you as weak or sissy or something else. And that's a real dynamic you need to take into account when you develop policies for scouting. Fourth, there is evidence that many offenders find religious organizations easier to operate in than secular institutions. For example, a 2006 study found that sex offenders growing up in a religious community and who stayed within that tradition, they were able to accumulate more victims, younger victims, and get away with it for a longer period of time. 
I'm not opposed to religion. I, uh, my faith means a great deal to me. That's not what we're talking about. But we have to be aware of that dynamic. So if you are a religious organization like Scouting and you're partnering with religious organizations, you have to take into account those two factors when you are developing your policies. Fifth, Mike mentioned youth on youth sexual abuse and half of the cases in Scouting fall into that category. Right now, based on uh, our current understanding, most youth on youth is perpetrated by boys. Over 90% of those offenders we catch uh, engaged in youth on youth activity are boys. Well, that's just a major challenge for an organization of men and boys. We also know that our understanding of pedophilia manifests in adolescence and teenage years. And so that's another factor that needs to be taken into account as well. The Persian poet Rumi said, the wound is the place where the light enters you. Mike, you were the light for scouts. You entered scouts. You were shining a light in the darkness. You were doing really, really great things. And now we're going in another direction. If scouting is truly going to get a handle on sexual abuse, it must employ child abuse experts like Mike Johnson. And they must consult with other true experts and adopt policies that are as closely aligned as possible to what we know from research is best practice and continue to adapt as more and better research comes down the field. I'm Jeff Dion. I'm an Eagle Scout from Troop 409 in Miramar, Florida. And in April of 1983, I was 15 years old a new and enthusiastic member of the Order of the Arrow, a secretive camping honor society in Boy Scouts. And I rode on a bus for five hours to Camp Shands in Gainesville, Florida, to attend a weekend Order of the Arrow section conference without any direct adult supervision. And I felt so grown up. I remember before I went, that I felt like I was going on a business trip because I was going alone and I wasn't just going camping, I was going to a conference. I was prepared. I was 15, I was a first class scout about to reach the rank of star and I was an accomplished camper. I had this. But a torrential rainstorm on Friday night flooded my tent and soaked my sleeping bag. It was the only time in my life I ever actually had to abandon my tent in the middle of the night. And I sought refuge in a nearby camp shelter that didn't have any walls. And I was cold and wet and waited there with some other boys who'd also been washed out of their tents uh, as we waited for hours for the sun to come up. And I was talking about it the next day when an adult from my council named Bill Matry, whom I didn't really know, told me that he had an extra sleeping bag and I could stay in his tent that night. And that was when he sexually abused me. I didn't disclose the abuse to anyone. I was more than willing to buy into the culture of silence because I knew that speaking out could jeopardize my chances of making Eagle. And that was too important. A few years later, when I heard that he had been arrested for abusing boys in his troop, I didn't speak out because I told myself that he was no longer a danger to other scouts. And even after dedicating my career to helping victims and protecting children from abuse, I still did not speak about being sexually abused and scouting because I was ashamed. And I still somehow blamed myself. So I stayed quiet. 
until now. I loved scouting. It was the source of my fondest memories. And I passed those skills on to my own children and sang those same songs around the campfire with them. I believe in scouting because America needs an institution to teach its young people leadership and citizenship and values and outdoor skills. And now that scouting is open to all, every child that wants to participate needs to be able to do so safely. This book taught me that scouting didn't expect me to be a perfect boy. But it asked me to do my best. It's never too late to do my best. And that's why I'm here today. I hope that by speaking out, I can be helpful to parents by reminding them that safety is paramount. I hope that by speaking out, I can be kind to other scouting survivors by letting them know you're not alone. And I hope that I can convince current scouts to be brave enough not to keep any secrets and to keep telling trusted adults until they listen and act. The Boy Scouts gave me this merit badge for safety, but they never warned me of the dangers that I faced from some scout leaders. All I want is for scouting to actually live up to the ideals that they try to instill in kids. And none of us can rest until scouting is safe for everyone. To all the survivors of abuse and scouting and all the survivors who are now sharing their secret and having a chance to take action. In the case of the Boy Scouts of America, they sought refuge and protection from scrutiny and forced disclosure by the survivors and in the courts by going into Chapter 11, reorganization or bankruptcy, as it's called. And there they have gotten refuge. And there they are now protected from being forced to disclose not only the files, not only the identity of the offenders, but all the dangerous practices they've chosen to uh, continue to employ. They feel safe there. But kids aren't safe in Boy Scouts of America. But they're safe in Chapter 11 from scrutiny by the survivors, by the experts, and uh, by the public. In their reorganization, there are over 82,000 claims that have been made by survivors of sexual abuse. 82,000. Those are just those that were able to come forward and did come forward within a short period of time given them. It begs the question, how many are being abused right now? And how many have been that have never been able to share that secret, much less bring a claim? It's horrifying. And so to each survivor, um, who has the courage and finds a way to share his or her secret and is given the chance under the law as the statutes of limitations are opening up across this country 
to take action, to stand up for yourself and your own truth, and to do something to protect other kids. We express deep gratitude. You are the heroes. You are the heroes. And to you survivors, you are the heroes. All of you, and every time you speak, and every time you act, more truth is known, and more peril revealed. And so we express to you, and on your shoulders, we all stand here today in this call to action, in this fierce urgency of now, in this peril before us, in gratitude for your courage and your bravery. And to those nine survivors on this creditors committee in this bankruptcy, who have devoted not hundreds of hours, thousands of hours to trying to get the Boy Scouts to do the right thing and nothing but pushback, the same way Johnson got the pushback. Denial, deceit, hiding, and getting refuge in the bankruptcy court. It's time. It's time for the truth. It's time for Congress, who chartered this organization, to revise the charter and demand and require and investigate and then recharter it if they deserve it. And so, it's time for truth, armed with the courage of so many survivors who stand with us today, but particularly those that have come forward, and an invitation to know that it's time for the truth to be known, and it's time for kids to be protected in this organization. And so to all of you, we express our deep gratitude, our deep gratitude for this chance to be a part of this journey. With that, we'll take questions. Mike, why don't you stand up here?